Welcome to the Cal Corporation's series of videos about software engineering. The topic of this video is a string of Unicode characters. Before proceeding, make sure that you have already watched these other videos first. Several character encodings have existed throughout history. An ASCII character is 8 bits in size. Values less than 32 are unprintable for things like the form feed instruction. Value 32 is the space character. Values from 33 to 127 are English letters. Historically, the values from 128 to 255 were used for a variety of different purposes, depending on who was writing the software. Later, the ANSI organization standardized the ASCII encoding system, defining many code pages. A code page specifies some well-defined meaning for those values from 128 to 255. Although now obsolete, internationally-minded software used to use a multi-byte character that could be either 8-bit or 16-bit in size, depending on each individual character's initial bits. The Unicode Committee has defined a unique hexadecimal code called a code point for every letter of every language in the world. The committee decided what things should or should not make a difference. For example, a lowercase a has a different code point than an uppercase A, but a Helvetica A would need to use the same code point as an Arial A. An individual Unicode code point is either 16-bit or 32-bit in size. A UTF-16 string, also called a UCS2 string, will contain only the 16-bit Unicode characters whereas a UTF-32 string, also called a UCS-4 string, will contain only 32-bit Unicode characters. To aid in the detection of a CPU's endianness, UTF-16 strings are sometimes stored with a preceding Unicode byte order mark value of FEFF. In a step backwards, the UTF-8 encoding was invented to be a hybrid between ASCII and Unicode. For values from 0 to 127, a UTF-8 character is the same as the corresponding ASCII character. It is 8-bit in size. All other characters use a Unicode code point that is either 16-bit or 32-bit. A C++ character has a data type. An ASCII character has type care. You might sometimes also see this called a narrow character. For Windows, a compiler option determines whether that type is implemented as signed or unsigned. We prefer to use a Hungarian prefix of C for its identifier names. Its literal values are written as some character within single quotes. A literal string of these characters is written within double quotes. Any one special character can be written in an escaped form as a backslash followed by a hexadecimal number. Many standard library functions have been written to process strings of cares, such as strlen. If a Win32 function was written to use a string of cares, its name ends with a capital A, such as set window text A. A wide Unicode character has type WCare underscore T. Some old documentation used to just call these Unicode characters but we are now more careful 
to call them wide Unicode characters. For Windows, a compiler option determines whether this type is a built-in primitive or just a macro for unsigned short. But in either case, it is a two-byte unsigned value. But that's not always the case on Linux, where GCC might implement WCARE underscore T having some kind of larger size. So we prefer to use a generic Hungarian prefix of CW for the identifier names when programming on either platform. For this character type, its character and string literals are written by typing a capital L before the quote symbol. Many of the standard library functions, like STRLEN, have another version which was written specifically to process strings of wide Unicode characters. Their function names change the STR into WCS. Many Win32 functions also have a wide Unicode version. Their function names end with a capital W instead of a capital A. In C++, ASCII UTF-8 characters are not any special separate data type. It is really just an ASCII character, but with an understanding that foreign languages might be used in the content, the way UTF-8 encodes them. Like any ordinary ASCII character, it has data type care, and we prefer to use a Hungarian prefix of C for its identifier names. However, you may use a special literal value where the programmer types U8 before the quote symbol. A 16-bit Unicode character type was introduced by C++11 for Unicode characters that are guaranteed to always have that 16-bit size. It has data type care 16 underscore t. We prefer to use a Hungarian prefix of c2 for its identifier names. Its character and string literals are programmed by typing a lowercase u before the quote symbol. But this data type is not very useful because there is currently no support for manipulating 16-bit Unicode characters in the C++ standard libraries, nor in the Win32 platform. Similarly, C++11 introduced a 32-bit Unicode character data type for Unicode characters that are guaranteed to always have that 32-bit size. It has type care32 underscore t. We prefer to use a Hungarian prefix of C4 for its identifier names. Its character and string literals are programmed by typing an uppercase U before the quote symbol. But again, there is no support for manipulating 32-bit Unicode characters. The Windows platform actually comes in two versions, one version using ASCII characters and another version using wide Unicode characters. Nonetheless, Windows applications are sometimes encouraged to be written only one time using a built-in type alias tcare for defining your characters. That is an alias for either care or wcare underscore t depending on whether or not your build system has defined macros called Unicode. When we are following this technique, we use a Hungarian prefix of CX for identifier names. Macros assist the application, so it can be written only the one time while still generically working with either version of the Windows platform. For example, you would need to program character and string literals as ordinary quoted values inside of underscore text macro. 
then that macro either will or will not add the prefixing of a capital L, depending on which platform you're building with. Macros also help you generically call the correct standard library function. For example, your generic application code would call a function name starting with underscore TCS. That's actually not a function, but a macro. It would convert into either STR or WCS. So underscore TCSLEN would become either a call to STRLEN or WCSLEN. Macros also work the same way for Win32 functions, where set window text is actually a macro causing either set window text A or set window text W. The get C function sometimes returns minus one as an end of file marker, instead of its normal returning of a care ASCII character. To handle both possibilities, get C's return type is int, which can represent a minus one. For the normal case, the client code is expected to cast that return value from int into care. For wide Unicode characters, the getWC function has the same concern, so it returns a wint underscore t type, which client code is expected to normally cast into wcare underscore t. An input method editor is a program that allows computer users to enter complex characters and symbols, such as Japanese kanji characters, by using a standard keyboard. Applications can query which input method editor to use based on the computer's locale settings. Uniscribe is a set of APIs that allow a fine degree of control for processing complex script characters called glyphs. The rules governing the shaping and positioning of glyphs are part of the Unicode standard. 